Welcome to the report from Tiger Mountain, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to uh, read you a second letter from Archbishop Vagano. I've read out his first letter in Conservative Catholics Out the New World Order in the report from Tiger Mountain, so you can look that video up, and we'll provide a link to that at the bottom of this video. But this is the second video in a series. This is a letter from Archbishop Vagano, who is a, uh, a Catholic rebel, a whistleblower, who is against the um, globalist, he calls it the deep church, the globalist cabal within uh, the Vatican, which is actually quite huge. It was obviously all involved in the pedophile scandal and all that stuff. But the Church of Christ has been under attack by Satan. Obviously, it makes sense. Uh, and so there are still some good priests, though, left and some good practitioners of, of Catholicism. And some of them are sending out warnings uh, about the New World Order and this kind of global takeover that we've been seeing. So I'm going to read you this letter. Um, it's kind of a little bit long, but like uh, it's fantastic. So sit back and listen and, um, you know, take what you can from it. It's written to D Donald Trump and it says it's Holy Trinity Sunday, Mr. President. In recent months, we've been witnessing the formation of two opposing sides that I would call biblical. Uh, the children of light and the children of darkness. The children of light constitute the most conspicuous part of humanity, while the children of darkness represent an absolute minority. And yet the former are the object of a sort of discrimination, which places them in a situation of moral inferiority with respect to their adversaries who often hold strategic positions in government, in politics, in the economy, and in the media. Well, we know who he's talking about there, don't we? In an apparent inexplicable way, the good are held hostage by the wicked and by those who help them either out of their self-interest or fearfulness. These two sides, which have a biblical nature, follow the clear separation between the offspring of the woman and the offspring of the serpent, the devil, ladies and gentlemen. On the one hand, there are those although they have a thousand defects and weaknesses, you know, like many of us, are motivated by the desire to be good, to be honest, to raise a family, to engage in work and to give prosperity to their homeland, to help the needy and in obedience to the law of God to merit the kingdom of heaven. On the other hand, there are those who serve themselves, who do not hold any moral principle, who want to demolish the family and the nation, exploit workers to make themselves unduly wealthy, foment internal divisions and wars and accumulate power and money, for them, the fallacious illusion of temporal well-being will one day, if they do not repent, yield to the terrible fate that awaits them, far away from God in eternal damnation. In society, Mr. Trump, Mr. Trump, sorry, these are two opposing realities coexist as eternal enemies, just as God and Satan are eternal enemies. And it appears that the children of darkness, whom we may easily identify with the globalist and the deep state, which you wisely oppose and which is fiercely waging war against you in these days have decided to show their cards, so to speak, by now revealing their full plans. They seem to be so certain of already having everything under control that they have laid aside the circumspection that until now had at least partially concealed their true intention. The investigations underway will reveal the true responsibility of those who manage the COVID emergency, not only in the area of healthcare, but also in politics, the economy and media. We will probably find in this colossal operation of social engineering there are people who have decided the fate of humanity, arrogating to themselves the right to act against the will of citizens and their representatives in the government of nations. We will also discover that the riots in these days, Black Lives Matter, etc., were provoked by those who, seeing the virus was inevitably fading and that the social alarm of the pandemic is waning, necessarily have had to provoke civil disturbances because they would be followed by repression, which, although legitimate, could be condemned as an unjustified aggression against the population. The same thing is also happening in Europe in perfect synchrony. It's quite clear that the use of street protests is instrumental in the purposes of those who would like to see someone elected in the upcoming presidential election who embodies the goals of the deep state and who expresses the, those goals faithfully and with conviction. It will not be surprising if in a few months we learn once again that the hidden, that hidden behind these acts of vandalism and violence, uh, there are those who would hope to profit from dissolution of social order so as to build a world without freedom. Solve a Caligula, as the Masonic adage teaches, which means dissolve and coagulate, which is what's going on with our societies at the moment. They're trying to dissolve them and then coagulate the new world order. Although it may be, seem disconcerting, the opposing alignments I have described are also found in religious circles. There are faithful shepherds who care for the flock of Christ, but there are also mercenary infidels who seek to scatter the flock and hand the sheep over to be devoured by ravenous wolves. Obviously, that's the current Pope. Uh, it is not surprising that these mercenaries are allies of the children of darkness and hate the children of light. Just as, a, as there is a deep state, there is also a deep church. 
that betrays his duties and forswears its proper commitments before God. Thus, the invisible enemy, we know who that is, whom God, whom good rulers fight against in public affairs, is also fought against by good shepherds in the ecclesiastical sphere. It is a spiritual battle, which I spoke about in my Eastern Appeal, which was published on May 8th, which was the uh, subject of my previous video. For the first time, the United States has a new president who courageously defends the right to life, who is not ashamed to denounce the persecution of Christians throughout the world, who speaks of Jesus Christ and the right of citizens of freedom of worship. Your participation in the March for Life, and more recently your proclamation of the month of April as National Child Abuse Prevention Month, are actions that confirm you side, uh, which side you wish to fight on. And I dare to believe that both of us are on the same side of this battle, albeit with different weapons. Again, this is the letter from Archbishop Vagana to President Donald Trump. Uh, for this reason, I believe the attack of which you were subject after your first visit to the National Shrine of St. John Paul II is part of the orchestrated media narrative that seeks not to fight racism and bring social order, but to aggravate disposition, not to bring justice, but to legitimize violence and crime, not to serve the truth, but to favor one political faction. And it is disconcerting that there are bishops, such as those whom I recently denounced, who by their words prove that they are aligned on the opposing side. They are subservient to the deep state, to globalism, to aligned thought, to the new world order. They invoke ever more frequently in the name of a universal brotherhood, which is nothing Christian about it whatsoever, but evokes the Masonic ideals of those who want to dominate the world by driving God out of the courts, out of the schools, out of the families, and perhaps even out of the churches. The American people are mature and have now understood how the mainstream media does not want to spread the truth, but seeks to silence and distort it, spreading the lie that is useful for the purposes of their masters. However, it is important that the good, who are the majority, wake up from their sluggishness and do not accept being deceived by a not minority of dishonest people with unavowed purposes. It is necessary that the good, the children of light, come together and make their voices heard. What more effective way is there to do this, Mr. President, by, by prayer, asking the Lord to protect you, the United States and all of humanity from this enormous attack by the enemy? Before the power of prayer, the deceptions of the children of darkness will collapse. Their ploys will be revealed, their betrayal will be shown. Their frightening power will end in nothing brought to light and exposed for what it is, an infernal deception. Mr. President, my prayer is constantly turned to the beloved American nation and where I had the privilege and honor of being sent by Pope Benedict XVI as apostolic nuncio. Nuncio, sorry. In this dramatic and decisive hour for all humanity, I am praying for you and also for those who are at your side in the government of the United States. I trust that the American people are united with me and you in prayer to Almighty God. United against the invisible enemy of all humanity, I bless you and the First Lady, you beloved American nation, and all men and women of goodwill. And that's it. It's signed Carlo Maria Vagano, titular Archbishop of Ulpiano, former Apostolic Nuncio of the United States of America. So it's an extremely powerful letter. It's a little bit long, so, but I think, you know, really it speaks for itself and follows on from the previous one that I read to you on the report from Tiger Mountain. Let those words sink in, ladies and gentlemen. We're in a biblical battle against the forces of good and evil. We're in a potential kind of end time situation. Now the end times, you know, we don't know. I mean, is it the end of the world or is it the beginning of maybe a third covenant? We don't know, but you know, we're in a biblical battle and it's a very exciting time to be alive. We have to realize who the evil people are and we need to oppose it. So that's all I wanted to say on the report from Tiger Mountain today. Thank you for watching.